So it's a pleasure to be here in Wimbledon and uh, with the IVM team. I'm very excited to see from the background. We are in the full heart of tennis world and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Kevin Ferrar. So today I'm here to, to talk about uh, the work the IBM has been doing with tennis, with sports, but in specific during the championship during all this fantastic event that is one of the top events of sports in the world with a rich audience of almost 800 million people. So, Kevin, it's a pleasure to have you here, first of all. I'm just speaking with you this afternoon. So, Kevin, you you are a person that uh, has a fantastic experience in technology and as well, um, I would say, quite a lot of uh, authority based on your experience that has all going through a lot of the uh, trials and different things. I don't need gray hairs. Well, that's an important thing. So tell us a bit, first of all, about you and your experience with IBM career and from general innovation to sports or even as well right now with women in particular. So I have a computer science degree um, and I started off in my IBM career in more bizarre services as, as at the time. So it was really when IBM started getting into the business of working, providing services, commercial services, consulting services and clients. Um, and then I started working with Wimbledon in uh, 2012, um, and uh, on the back of that, and then in 2020, I took over the main role of um, looking after the, the partnership with Wimbledon. So I'm now the, the IBM partnership executive to, or to Wimbledon and covering all aspects of our operation. So in more than 10 years, through tell us a bit of something that, is, uh, that you found in all the, your experience. Yes, I mean, Swinburne gave us an opportunity to really showcase IBM's sensibilities in a number of areas. So, uh, well, data is obviously at the heart of it, but there's automation, and there's security, there's AI, um, cloud computing, uh, and on the consulting side, um, we work with Wimbledon and put a team, use the IBM Garage method, agile design thinking, etc. From this role, and I prefer role, what would be the the things that you meet more excited, more proud of. Well, first thing is that we have, you know, I have a fantastic team around me who create these wonderful experiences. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to then tell the story about what we do here. Um, so always looking for new data sources, and then from those data, from that data, both structured data and unstructured data. So it's it's, it's a journey each year. I have as an history with sports, in particular. And of course, we will then, it's 30 years of history. So there's a lot of uh, heritage from the first signers of looking at data to right now with AI and generative AI. So my lights, especially in your last 10 years that you saw in the relationship between IBM, the work with data and the work with the, with the events. Sure. And there's been a lot of focus obviously over the last couple of years around generative AI. In 2017, we launched a feature um, where we were creating AI highlights reels of matches. And so listening to the noise of the crowd, looking at the gesture of the players, um, we obviously cover stats. We know where in the match is it an exciting point in terms of break points or championship point, match point. Um, and so we combine all of those factors to give an excitement level to each of the rallies. This is a teamwork. And there's a lot mm. of partners, there's a lot of work. So um, from this work you do in terms of data cloud computing and uh, as well partnerships, what do you want to highlight? It's the application of data in each of those areas. It's you know, different nuances, different sports. Um, but the Masters were taking the data around golf and turning that into fantastic kind of experiences through, um, through the website. And again, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to showcase the tech um, and, and you know, use the, the breadth of experience and equities in our game. You mentioned what this, the, the process of announcing the fun experience. So some of the numbers is around 700 million people seeing what the shift can ship or why there's an audience uh, in multiple different channels. So tell us a bit about the numbers and this part of the work on the relationship with the fans of with AI and some of the technology innovations that you will work. Yeah, tell us, you mentioned earlier, the hundreds of millions of viewers around the world through the different channels. Um, we want people to have a feeling of being here without being here. So you'll notice in the, in on the website is very rich visually, lots of images around what's going on underground, it's the layers. And so that's through some of the features that we've forwarded him. I know that uh, this year you have uh, quite an innovative uh, feature that is Catch Me Up. Tell us what is Catch Me Up, uh, how it works, for the bit of the impact that is in the uh, Wimbledon. Sure. 
Um, so what we want to do is create an experience where fans, when they come into the app or come into the website, um, they can read stories about their favorite players. Um, and so it's short form stories that give a bit of a preview ahead of matches and, and then also a post-match summary of, of what's going on during the match. Um, and it's, if you have favorited some players in the app or the website, and that's the content that you will see. And we use geolocation to, to serve off these player cards. Then um, we serve up stories that are trending. You know, that might be top seed, top ranked players. It might be somebody who's about to play a top seed. And so always trying to create fresh content so that when you're going in, you can feed in stories that you want to see. Can you explain for people listening to us, I think one of the questions about the IOP, how do you manage to summarize the data without to elucidate? Like you said, this is key for the fans around the world. So what we do is we we take something called a, an, I, an IBM foundation model within our what's an X. So of course, our book, so the catch me up feature, we're using a large language model and make sure that we're using trusted data sources. So it is a case of selecting the right model, selecting the right data, training that model. There's governance built in throughout that whole process. Behind all the Wimbledon spectacular on the events, there's an entire part of cloud computing that you guys serve and that you are being using. I know that for instance, looking at uh, the events, there's a lot of work as well to look at data visualization around cybersecurity attacks or potential risks. Yeah, but a bit of the things that I think are important that people sometimes don't see in an event of sports like this. Yes. So obviously the the number of visitors to Wimbledon.com that spikes massively in the lead up to and especially during the championships. Um, and so in order to scale uh, effectively, so we're using a hybrid cloud infrastructure. It's a combination of IBM clouds and AWS clouds. Um, and we have range of services that are running. Um, and then we had a series of containerized apps, for example, before the cash bill. So uh, this year, and that's as well, one of the things you are right now focusing is potential to look at broader integration of technology around the potential events in the future. So can you tell us a bit all that will be creating a more inclusive and uh, more diverse? Um, Wimbledon content team obviously still writing all of the stories about the, the, the matches that they always have done. This is very much about complementing the content that's already been created by the Wimbledon content team um, and enabling that, that generation of content at scale through Autonex and on the Genesis AI Clearability. There's a lot of knowledge for the years of history, and there's a lot of things you guys want to do. But of course, like you said, there's a huge international knowledge of big sports events. On the Wimbledon, uh, what would be the present and the future for, for people who listen to us where they can actually use no more what you guys are doing from IBM, but as well, for instance, some of these data besides the app? Tell us a bit about the uh, present and future. So a lot of our focus at the moment is around the fan engagement piece, um, but we also have wonderful multimodal models. So that's also taking input, some, but then just finding data in video and in images. I think the more data we can we can find, the more insights we derive from that data, and then we can create amazing experiences on, on, the, on top of those insights. Oh, thank you so much. So last one, the, where can people find the information? I know that you have specific landing pages and specific parts with just a bit more of a view behind the scenes. Of course. So you can go to ybm.com slash Wimbledon. That will give you information about our partnership. Um, actually, if you go to ybm.com slash sports, then you can find the information on all of our partnerships. And there are links off there to our case study. There are blogs, something that can go into the, the underlying technology. So you're a good starting point. Thank you so much. No, Kevin. In order, uh, the congratulations for all these hard workshots. Thank you very much. Pleasure to work with you. Thank you.